what up? Sorry I haven't put a review out or anything lately. I've been building my PC, so this is going to be the Dishonored 2 game review. Stick around. Hope you guys enjoy. Watch your step, Majesty. I'm not looking forward to all the ceremony today. Your signet ring. There. You're ready. Thank you, Alexei. Open the doors. All hail Her Imperial Majesty, Emily Caldwin. Loyal subjects, we're going through a difficult time, but today we honor my mother, the late Jessamine Caldwin. May her memory survive through the ages. So Dishonored 2, right, man? Hell yeah, I've been waiting for this since I finished Dishonored 1 back in the day. Man, uh, so the story picks up like a couple years after the first one. Emily Caldwin's Empress, Corvo, Tano's her bodyguard, the, grand, the great protector again, like he was with her mom. So, shit has passed, you know, uh, apparently something's, someone's killing people, and they kind of think it's Corvo again, killing people under the orders of Emily, but it's not. It's someone called the Crown Killer. That's what we get in the beginning. Then all of a sudden, this, uh, the Duke from one of the Dunwalls, or the Empire's, you know, many other lands comes in and brings in a so-called person from royal blood who's actually the rightful ruler of the throne uh, Delilah Copperstone or Copper Pot or something like that alright and then she takes over the throne and that's where the game begins you start off there and you get to pick which character you want to play as you either play as Emily or Corvo to be fair from playing this game with both characters this game was made I feel like it was made specifically to play as Emily for her powers I mean other than that, yeah, it doesn't matter who you pick, um, but you do go into a town where Corvo grew up. So if you pick Corvo, he recalls living there and shit. If you pick Emily, she just talks about her father living there, which is Corvo, of course, if you know, guys don't know. So, they, for, but like I said, her powers are definitely for most of these levels. They make it way easier distracting the guards. Because, I mean, Corvo gets his default powers from the first game, which are cool, don't get me wrong. It's just not as good as... Emily's powers that she gets from the outsider and yes the outsider does come out voiced by a different actor but um so there he kind of looks younger in my opinion but whatever um so like I said yes this game I felt like it was way better playing it with Emily even though I love Corvo and I played it the first time through with Corvo but um great game though and it's going with uh, some of the characters though because that's what the game's about. I'm not gonna go over every fucking character. Only the main ones are the ones I think had a more impact on the story mode. So, also I know there's. I'll talk about this at the end. But the whole issue with the PC players. So that's something we have to discuss at the end of the review. All right. So our first character, of course, is the Empress Emily Caldwin. Um, from the first game on, she was a little girl. She came out in the first game, uh, but she was a little girl. In this one, she's a full-fledged main character. You can play as her, uh, find out her thoughts. Her powers are a little bit different, more different than Corvo's. I mean, of course, Corvo had Blink. She has something called, I forgot what, the tentacle grasp, which is pretty awesome, especially in fights. If you upgrade it enough, you can actually pull things to you, pull people, and stab them. It does say it does not work with stealth, but whatever. Uh, like I said, she's her powers are made for this game. I swear to God, I, if you didn't have the option to play Corvo with her, it's still fucking great. And uh, like I said, she goes, she goes and tries to reclaim her throne thing, you know. <laughs> Sorry. And then we have Corvo Altano. Of course, Corvo was a main character from the first game. He was uh, the Empress's main bodyguard, the Great Defender, whatever they call him. And now he's the same for his daughter. Um, of course, if you play as Corvo, you get all his default powers, but it's just like fucking it's like uh god of war your powers get taken away in the beginning so you got to get them back so that sucks right but he has his normal powers blink uh see in the dark well why do you think both of them have that 
the whole rat thing, the plague. So he gets those powers. He's the same powers in the first one. Um, he talks more about his uh, past since he's going to where he was born, and shit arises, especially when towards the game about if he is really uh, Emily's father, but whatever. And then we have Jasmine Caldwin. Of course, you remember her. She was the Empress from the first game. She was murdered in the beginning by uh, uh, what's his name, Dual or Dual? I forgot his name. Um, basically, she's in this game as the an item you get from the outsider, the heart. Which, if you guys remember from the first game, it was the heart that show you where all the relics and bone charms are and shit. Well, she comes back in the second game, but this time it, it is confirmed that it's her because you kind of guess about it in the first game, but now for sure you know it's her heart. And then she like I guess use it to find runes and bone charms, all right? And she talks to you know whatever. And then we have the Lila Copper Spoon. It was Copper Spoon. Um, now, when I first heard her name, I'm like, man, it sounds familiar. It was actually a character from the DLC from the first game. She controlled the witches of uh, whatever. And uh, when you play as, I think it was the dagger, the knife in Dunwall, whatever, you play as Droud, the assassin that killed Empress. And he's trying to, you know, just figure out why he was sent to kill her. And Delilah finds out that Delilah's actually trying to kill Emily in the DLC. And then Drought stops her by killing her. Or whatever you did. But apparently she comes back in this game and tries to reclaim her throne from Emily. So she gets, she's trying to get revenge, basically. And then we have the Outsider. Uh, if you guys remember him, he's that fool that lives in that weird place. He gives you your powers. He does that for both Corvo and Emily, depending on who you choose. Uh, has the same dialogue, little changes here and there. He, he, you actually find out how he became the outsider. He tells you the story uh, later on, like throughout the game. So that was really interesting. And it's always hard to read this character, but it seems like he doesn't like that Delilah has powers and uses his powers to up upgrade her powers. So he kind of really wants you to kill her. Does it's just implied, but like I said, it's really hard to read him since he is the outsider and very vague talks about shit but you do see him throughout the game when you pick up these special born charms and shit like that and then we have Anton Sokolov a recurring character just like Corvo and Emily and Delilah I guess he come out in the first game he's the inventor of everything from the first game the electricity walls the trains everything he worked for the Empress then he worked for the person that took over in the first game he was captured by Corvo and interrogated and then switch sides and he kind of helps you out in this game but first you have to find him and like I said he's an inventor and he's still he, and this one he's painting a lot more he's actually working on paintings and shit cause he's older I mean time has passed from the first game you know he's not as young as he used to be oh, and then we have Megan Foster this is I thought she was a new character but then hearing her story and background she's actually also came out in a DLC in the dagger of uh, of Dunwall she was Droud's assistant, Billy, I think her name was. So she's a recurring character. Um, in this game, you have choices. She helps you out a lot. She has her own ship and takes you to uh, Karnakas or whatever you go to. And uh, she helps you out throughout the whole game. She's actually the ferryman, like that old guy was in the first one. And then you can also help her in one mission. But I'm not going to tell you how, because you got to play it yourself. And then we have, uh, what's his, her name, Hypatia, Al Alexandria Hypatia. She's a doctor, um, basically very smart, very important. You kind of want to recruit her so she can help you out and find out who the fuck the crown killer is. She's like Sokolov in a sense, but she's more a uh, biocentric, I'm biocentric, I mean, biology kind of doctor. Uh, she studies animals, plagues, and all that crap, because you know the rat plague that happened. Now you have these, uh, fire bugs that shit's annoying man so she's there and you got Luca Abel uh, the Duke of Karnakas he's actually working together with Delilah uh, he, he's a fucking horrible per a horrible Duke I've heard, you hear people bitch about him he oppresses his own people he fucking he's basically the biggest douche on the planet he's like crazy alright not not crazy in the sense, but he's intelligent enough to actually be able to usurp the throne for Delilah. And he's one of her main backers. There's many people that back Delilah up. He's the main one. 
uh, he backs her up with money and shit that he, she needs. Then we have another backer for um, Delilah. We have um, Brianna Ashworth. She um, helps Delilah out. She's actually the main witch, like underling of Delilah. She has an infatuation with her, and she's Delilah's favorite. She has also money, backs her up with that, and, uh, basically leading the witches while Delilah's at Dunwall, at the throne. She is gifted in the arts of magic, like Delilah is. And uh, you find out a lot about her backstory, how she was a rich aristocrat and shit like that. Then we have Kirin Jindosh. Now, this guy's definitely like Sokoloth. His inventions are <laughs> pretty legit. That mission where you're in his house, uh, actually be ready to explore a lot because, yeah, he's a great inventor, trust me. He invented the Clockwork Soldiers, which are those giant machine type blade motherfuckers. He's intelligent as fuck, and he actually is that character from that uh, trailer you guys can watch. He's that guy. You would think from that trailer he would be like a bigger guy, but he was just a underling supporter of uh, Delilah, so that was interesting. I think they might have tried to go a different way with that, but whatever. And then we have Artemis Silton. Stilton, my bad. He's also somewhat of a backer for Delilah. He, he They used his house basically to uh, bring her back from uh, wherever she was after the DLC in the first game. It's not really a spoiler because, I mean, if you played the DLC, you're like, what the fuck, I killed her. I sent her to a different dimension. Well, they bring her back because of this fool's house. And uh, you basically, he's more of a neutral, but uh, he's there. He was a uh, leader of the miners of, of Karnaka, so. And then we have, the course, the crown killer, the person who was sneaking around killing people. They thought it was, um, what's his name, Corvo, but it's not. It's definitely a female. Then so they thought it was Emily. I don't know. You gotta play the game to find out who she is. But she is deadly. Uh, of course, you could tell right away that she backs Delilah. She's working for Delilah somehow, but no one knows who this person is. But don't worry, you will find out. I think early on too. So that's a good thing, right? All right. So um, before we go into the, the explaining else, I don't know much about the what's canon in this game, like from the first game. But I did find, if you look at the paintings, you should see paintings of characters from the first game. So, I don't know what's canon and what's not canon. Like, uh, this painting right here has the three brothers. If you guys remember from the first game, that one on the far left helps you. And then there's a mission where you get to either kill his twin bro uh, the his other two brothers who are twins or save them. I don't know what's canon, but the only characters that come out from the first one were Sokolov, Corvo, Emily, Delilah... Uh, Matt, Median, Median, or whatever, and Sokolov. Or I think I already said Sokolov. It was the only characters from the first game that come out. They do talk about Droud, uh, the assassin that killed the Empress. Um, so apparently, if you guys did play the DLC, uh, Corvo let him live. So he's still out there. And so is uh, Billy, you know. So something might happen as a DLC release later on. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the game was great, man. I, I enjoyed it. I fucking did have issues like many other PC players playing on PC where, um, you know, frame rates dropping, even on low, low fucking, like, nothing settings, frame rates were dropping, uh, so it made it impossible to sneak around and be stealthy, but it didn't matter, I just went straight out, you know, blades blasting and guns shooting, um, the story was, it was the same story from the first one. You take away your throne, you gotta put someone back on the throne, you have to kill all these people, find out where they are, blah blah blah, so it was basically the same thing as the first game, you know, just, uh, you get to play either this character or this character, uh, weapons are improved, you can upgrade them a little bit more, not by much, I've actually, I feel you can upgrade them more in the first one, but no, it, it's about the same, um, the black markets are funny. You could sneak into them, kill the black market dealer, and steal all his, sh all his shit. So, at every single one, I found out every single one you could steal it. All right. Um, and the bad guy, I'm kind of getting tired of these DLC fucking main bad guys. They did it with Dragon Age Origins. Now they're doing it with this game. What's next? I don't know. Um, but I, I am looking forward to what DLC is coming out because that DLC from the first game was good. So I wonder if Drought is going to come back or Billy's going to try and find Drought and kill him. I do not know. 
but that just seems interesting. But I am um, I'm gonna give it this game a seven. I know it's like what we talking about. Just trust me, a seven out of ten. The story brings it down because it's just the same story from the first one. The gameplay was good, but the frame rate drops kind of killed it. Definitely game aimed at consoles, and that's just not a good thing. Um, Corvo, they, they just copied and pasted them from the first game. He had the same shit. I kind of wanted to see variations, but whatever. Um, Emily, if you play with Emily, though, it's the best experience, in my opinion. So go ahead and do that. Play with her first, and then play with Corvo, and you can compare it yourselves. But yeah, that's my going to be my score. Hey, um, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy. Hit that like, hit that sub. Catch you next time.